guys and welcome back to another video. Today I am bringing you my 2021 TBR. There are a lot of books here, I'm not going to go into detail about them, I'll do that in each monthly TBR. This is just what I'm reading in the year of 2021 and there's a lot so we're going to get straight into it. I'm going to go adult standalones, uh, YA standalones, middle grade standalones, adult series, YA series, middle grade series, uh, classics, non-fiction. So let's do this. All right, first off, I'm gonna go with the uh, adult standalones that I do not own yet, which are Once and Future Witches by Alex E. Harrow, The Age of Witches by Louisa Morgan, and The Evening in the Morning by Ken Follett. The only other historical fiction I have on here as a standalone is La Reina Descalza by Ildefonso Falcones. Then we're going to move into Adult SFF. The Inheritance by Robin Hobb and Megan Lindham. Fairy Tales by Raymond E. Feist. Severance by Ling Ma. The Priory of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon. Who Fears Death by Nnedi Okorafor. The Witch's Kind and A Secret History of Witches by Louisa Morgan. The Sword of Kaigen by M. L. Wang. The Starless Sea by Erin Morgenstern. The Shock of the Fall by Nathan Filer. Then I have, well, these are now the literary fiction ones as well as Shock of the Fall. We have My Dark Vanessa by Kate Elizabeth Russell, The Kite Runner by Caleb Husseini, and Girl Woman Other by Bernadine Evaristo. Moving on to adult SFF, well, adult series in general, not just SFF. Adult series. We have the Saga Compendium, Volumes 1 through 9, by Brian K. Vaughan and Fiona Staples. The Wayfarers series by Becky Chambers, which are Long Way to a Small Angry Planet, A Close and Common Orbit, and Record of a Space Born Few. We also have the fourth book coming this year, which I will also be trying to read. I have the Seed to Harvest series by Octavia Butler, which is Wild Seed, Mind of My Mind, Clay's Ark, and Pattern Master. The uh, Winter Night series by Catherine Arden, which are The Bear and the Nightingale, The Girl in the Tower, and The Winter of the Witch. The Inheritance Trilogy by N.K. Jemison, which are The Hundred Thousand Kingdoms, the Broken Kingdoms, and The Kingdom of Gods. 1Q84 by Haruki Murakami. This could be considered either a standalone or a series, but as it's in volumes one through three, I figured I'd have it as a series. The Rainwild Chronicle by Robin Hobb, which are The Dragon Keeper, The Dragon Haven, City of Dragons and Blood of Dragons. We have the Faithful and the Fallen series by John Gwynn, which are Malice, uh, Bala, Wrath and Ruin. I don't know which way around they are. Ruin and Wrath, even. Uh, we have I would like to continue on with my read of the Last Kingdom series by Barnard Cornwell. I have so far read up to book five, so six until wherever I find. Um, I would like to read The Galactic Milieu by Julian May, which I currently do not own. I do own it, but it's not here. Um, and then finally, oh my god, this is going to literally break my back. Oh my god. <laughs> the Matthew Shardlake series by CJ Sampson, which are... Revelation, Darkfire, Sovereign, uh, Dissolution, Heartstone, Lamentation, and Tombland. And I'm fairly certain those are out of order. Oh. Alright. We're going to move on to YA. Right, so the YA standalones are... The ones I do not own yet are The Winter Wood and The Wicked Deep, both by Shay Unshaw and Burn by Patrick Ness. The graphic novel that I have is the first volume of Vinland Saga by Makoto Yukimura. Then we have the rest of SFFR, 
The Kingdom of Back by Marie Lu. Uprooted and Spinning Silver by Naomi Novik. Sisters of the Winterwood by Rena Rosner. Dry by Neil Schusterman. Slay by Brittany Morris. Pet by Okoikoi Imezi. And The Mermaid, The Witch and the Sea by Maggie Takuda Hall. For YA Contemporary, I have History is All You Left Me by Adam Silvera. Darius the Great Deserves Better by Adib Coram. Solitaire by Alice Oseman. With the Fire on High by Elizabeth Acevedo. Everything Everything by Nicola Yoon. The Stars and the Blackness Between Them by Juanuda Petrus. And Eliza and Her Monsters by Francesca Zappia. Then I also have some books in verse that I would like to be getting to that are YA, which are Punching the Air by Ibi Zaboy and Yusuf Salam. Run Rebel by Manjeet Man. Clap When You Land by Elizabeth Acevedo. The Long Way Down by Jason Reynolds. And The Black Flamingo by Dean Atter. Moving on to YA series. First off, we have the Once and Future duology by Amy Rose Capetta and Corey McCarthy, which are the which are Once and Future and Sword in the Stars. La Guerra de las Brujas by Maite Carranza, which are La Guerra de las Brujas, el, La Maldición de Odi y El Desierto de Hielo. I have the entire Caraval trilogy by Stephanie Garba, which are Caraval. Legendary and Finale. The Akata Duology by Nadia Korofor, which are Akata Witch and Akata Warrior. The Izzy O'Neill Duology by Laura Stephen, which are the exact opposite of OK and A Girl Called Shameless. The Inheritance Cycle by Christopher Paolini, which are Aragorn, Eldest, Brisinger and Inheritance. The Shadow of the Fox Trilogy by Julie Kagawa, which are Shadow of the Fox, The Soul of the Sword, and The Knight of the Dragon. The Illuminae Files by Jay Kristoff and Amy Kaufman, which are Illuminae, Gemini, and Obsidio. The Strange the Dreamer Duology by Lainey Taylor, which are Strange the Dreamer and News of Nightmares. I would like to continue on my read of the Shattered Sea series by Joe Abercrombie. I am missing half of half the world and half the sea, I think. And I would like to continue on with my read of the News Flesh series by Myra Grant. I read Feed in 2020 and I will be reading Deadline, Blackout and Feedback in 2021. Okay, middle grade. All right, so two middle grade series that we own but haven't been unwrapped yet. Uh, Dragon Rider by Cornelia Funke, which are Dragon Rider and The Griffin's Feather, and The Wizards of Once by Cressida Cow, which are The Wizards of Once, um, Twice Magic, Knock Three Times, and Never and Forever. Then the next series, sort of, it's kind of a series, it's a companion series of companion books, um, are the Sophie Anderson uh, Starvik retellings, which are The House of Chicken Legs, The Girl Who Speaks Bear, and Castle of Tangled Magic. I'll be reading the Jumbies series by Tracy Baptiste. I have pre-ordered the third book as well. So we have Jumbies, uh, Rise of the Jumbies and Jumpy God's Revenge. I have oh, the Potion Diaries trilogy by Amy Allwood, which are the Potion Diaries, Royal Tour and Going Viral. I have the Dream Snatcher trilogy by Abby Elphinstone, which are the Dream Snatcher, the Shadow Keeper, and the Night Spinner. I have the entire Kiramala and the Kingdom Beyond series uh, by Sayantani Das Gupta, the first one being The Serpent's Secret. I don't own the other two yet. Um, the Boot series by Shane Hegarty. I only have the first one of these at the moment as well, and I will be purchasing the other two. And the rest of the adventure, I will be reading The Adventurer's Guild by Zach Lauren Clark and Nick Iliopoulos. And again, I own the other two, but they've not been unwrapped yet. Um, we'll be reading Book of Dragons by Ruth Manning Sanders and illustrated by Robin Jacks. As for 
standalones, middle grade standalones. Um, the ones that we do not own yet or have not been unwrapped yet are The Republic of Buds by Jessica Miller, Ivy, Ivy Aberdeen's Letters to the World and The Mighty Heart of Sunny St. James, both by Ashley Herring Blake, uh, The Secret of the Sun, Sun King and Skyscrapers, both by Emma Carroll, The Christmas Horus by Tom Fletcher, The Eye of the North by Sinead O'Hart, and Vasilisa by Julie Matheson. The ones that I do own, however, are Frostfire by Jamie Smith, Regreso al Reino de la Fantasía by Jerónimo Stilton, Truckers by Terry Pratchett, and Frost Heart 2 Escape from Aurora by Jamie Littler. Okay, and finally, moving on to um, non fiction and classics. We'll start with the classics. So I have Sense and Sensibility by Jane Austen. The Return of Sherlock Holmes by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, which I will be doing a short story a month like I did last year. Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. Crime and Punishment by Fyodor Dostoevsky. La Casa de Bernarda Alba by Federico García Lorca. The Secret Garden by Frances Hodgson Burnett. It's the only children's classic I have this year. And a modern classic I have is Jazz by Toni Morrison. And for non-fiction, I will be reading So The Edge of the Sky by Anne Huagawa, which is a biography. Kelly Osborne's biography, Fierce. Barack Obama's Dreams from My Father. And finally, we have The Vori by Mark Galliotti. Wow. Okay, so that's a lot of books to be reading in one year, but I'm very excited about it. Anyway, I'm going to go now put all of these, as many as I can, on the shelves and we'll see how it works out and I'll show you the end result. All right, guys, the final product. We have all of my adult and YA here on the shelves. These are SFF. And then this is contemporary and historical fiction. Then moving around here is where we have middle grades for now. It's not double stacked. I've got stuff at the back. So these are all the middle grades so far. I'm waiting to get more and then they'll go probably there. Double stacking that shelf. And then finally we have my classics and nonfiction. So I actually managed to get them all in here. I'm really happy with that. So let me just uh, flip you around. So that is it for books and series that I want to read in 2021. Let me know how far ahead you plan your reading and what you're planning on reading in 2021. And yeah, I, I hope that you enjoyed this video. It was quite um, chaotic to say the least, but I'm excited and that's good. So I will catch you guys in the next video. Thank you so much for watching and um, yeah, I hope you have an excellent reading year in 2021. See you in the next one guys. Bye.